This is Canada Reads American Style, featuring two friends who love Canada Reads and Canadian literature. Welcome our host Rebecca from Michigan and Tara from Ontario. Hi everyone, it is Rebecca and Tara, and today is book chat number 14, and we are trying something a little different that you all can't see or know <laughs> about really, but uh, we are actually, we can see each other. I know. I don't know <laughs> why we didn't think of doing this before. <laughs> I know. Maybe, well, when we were doing the free part of it, maybe it wasn't a, a well, no, it was still available even in yeah, the free part of it. Yeah. So in the software we use, which is Zencaster. That's how we chat with each other and with uh, people we interview. Uh, but this is an option and we can actually see each other. Yeah. And it's, it's really, really fun. fun. Yeah. Yeah. Because I think yeah. we always were like, let's not do video because I usually take a shower in the evenings and then we can just like be in our PJs and not have to worry about it. I am in my PJs, in my big <laughs> fluffy house coat. My hair is all back. I'm, and, but this, the video thing's really awesome. I like it. I like yeah. seeing your face as we chat. Yeah. Exactly. Same here. And so obviously you all will still just get the audio part of it, but I do think it is fun for us to be able to see each other. Yeah. And it's like, we are really just having a chat rather than it's sort of, we're never quite sure when to go or when to stop or whatever. So anyway, yeah, it's kind of fun. Yeah. I like it. So how, how's your day? Anything special you want to chat about today? Well, let's, I'm going to start with my bookish. Okay. So Every month, I started about six months ago, I do a monthly TBR on usually the first or second day of each month. I put a little together, a little stack of maybe five or six books, which uh, on if you're on, follow me on Instagram, I call them my well-intentioned TBR so that those are the books I'm going to read that are from my own physical TBR, not including my library books. Because I'm, I'm, a, I'm a list driven person. I like to tick boxes and go through a pile. So this works really well for me. And I choose them based on my mood like prior to the month, but then that's what I read during the month. And normally I just make my way through the stack. This month? No, it's not working because of Canada Reads. It's sad my TBR. I've read, or I should say I'm reading so far one book from my TBR from that mm -hmm. Normally, by this is we're recording on the fifteenth, I believe today is. The 15th I think it's the sixteenth or the sixteenth. I think I don't know. January, I should be like pretty much over halfway through, like on my third or fourth book. In that, I'm still on the first one because I get I'm getting library holds for Canada Reads coming in. It's not a big problem. It's awesome, except I keep looking at it every night. I go to bed and I'm like, there it is same size as it was <laughs> <laughs> it's staring at you right <laughs> and I'm like fine I'll just roll it over to next month I will also do like a new TBR stack but this will just go on top because I need to for my mind I need to work my way through that stack but anyways well I think it's funny because you have made I joke about it and you joke about it too, my love for spreadsheets. And yeah. again, my spreadsheets are pretty basic, but so you're a list maker and I'm yeah. a spreadsheet creator. So yeah. It's very similar. I, mm -hmm. That's true. I have laughed at you. Go, oh, you and your spreadsheets. <laughs> <laughs> but I cannot deviate from, a, well, I, I do deviate from a list, I was going to say, because I only, I'm only accountable to myself. So, you know, if I, if I fail, not a big deal, people, I don't care. But I do like that little check. Or that little, like, take a book off and put it on the shelf that's, you know, it's been read. Yep. Well, and it's funny, too, because you've really helped me. You say that a lot where you just say, I'm only, you know, I'm only, I only have to please myself or something like that. I love that phrase because I, I think about that a lot, that I try not to pressure myself in any way about mm -hmm. any of this stuff, because it is true. It's just, it's like we're reading. I know. And it doesn't matter. Like we'll no. get to whatever we'll get to whenever. So yeah. yeah. No one's paying us. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, but if somebody out there would like to pay us, yes. we would be Please. happy to Please. accept a lot of money. Yeah. That would be great. Or a chocolate yeah. bar. I'll even take a chocolate bar. 
Oh my gosh, right? that reminds me. Piece by Chocolate just had a giveaway. I don't know when it ends. Yes. You tagged me on it. Thank yes. you very much because then I tagged other people on it because it does ship to the U.S. They didn't say yeah. it wasn't international or anything, but they do ship to the U.S. because I actually, before he even before he was, um, Tarek was on um, Canada Reads, I had ordered chocolate from yeah. them and had it delivered here so in Michigan. So it was pretty cool. Well, crossed my fingers that one of us wins. Yes, so that cool. would be that would be amazing. Yeah, yeah, that'd be amazing. So my big news for today is something I never thought would ever happen in my lifetime. On Goodreads, you know, they have all those giveaways. And I always enter if I have a book on my TBR and then it says, Oh, you, you know, have a we have a giveaway for this book. I won. I won Yay. a book. I know. I never thought because I figured there's probably a million people on Goodreads and I'm never gonna win anything. But I won Everyone in My Family Has Killed Someone <laughs> by, who is the author? Benjamin Stevenson. And I don't know. I feel like you mentioned it first or something. I don't or... know if it was me, but it was, was it in the summer? Was it published this past summer? I can't remember. It was everywhere when it was published. Okay, maybe. Like yeah. It was very popular. It's supposed to be a really fun book. Oh, no, it, it was published January 2nd this year. That's what, oh, says. what the heck am I thinking? Maybe you're thinking of something else. Maybe I'm thinking, maybe that's his second book. Maybe there's a, oh, maybe I'm thinking of a completely different book. Yeah, everyone in my family has killed someone. And it says here, uh, Knives Out and Clue meet Agatha Christie in the Thursday Murder Club in this utterly original, not to be missed, fiendishly clever blend of classic and modern mur murder mystery. So. Oh, yeah, I'm reading that. Yeah. Yeah. And it says here, this is, I just have to read this because I think it's hilarious. It says, uh, Marine Corps again, Washington Post, everyone in my family has killed someone. Or it says, some of us, the high achievers, have killed more than once. I'm not trying to be dramatic, but it is the truth. Some of us are good, others are bad, and some just unfortunate. I'm Ernest Cunningham. Call me Ern or Ernie. I wished I'd killed whoever decided our family reunion should be at a ski resort, but it's a little more complicated than that. Have I killed someone? Yes, I have. And then it says, who was it? Let's get started. Anyway, I just think that sounds so really fun. fun. Yeah. yeah. I mean, more fun than I think I've, I mean, I'm more excited about this book than probably anything on my TBR right now. Yeah. Seriously. Because yeah. it just sounds so fun. It really does. And, and I need a little, yeah, I need some laughs. So you need some that's fun. My, yeah, that's, yeah. yeah. Some fun murder. <laughs> Come on. Exactly. And I love that everybody in the family has killed someone. So, all right, cool. So what's next? We have to talk about. What are we oh, currently yeah. reading? What, yeah. What, what are we currently? Thank you. Thank yeah. You. Right. So what are you currently reading? Okay. I'm currently reading. I am working on one of my, uh, not resolutions, one of my book intentions. Is that what we call it? Reading goals. goals. Oh my gosh. Reading goals. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> reading goals for this year, which was to read through uh, or start reading Helen Humphrey's backlist. Oh my yes. gosh. Yes. Yes. So I'm very excited. So I started a couple of days ago, uh, Leaving Earth by Helen Humphrey. So I think it was published around 1997. So it's pretty old. Um, a short book. I really... I, I can't make a blanket statement. I was about to, but I'm like, I, this is only the second book of hers that I've read, but I've seen them. She never writes really long books. Like they, they look, they tend to be, I think, fairly short, at least the ones I've seen and read. And her writing is so concise. Like I am really, her writing is beautiful and concise. And what she can tell you in one sentence about a character is mm -hmm. very important. Like, I love that when you read one little sentence and you're like, have huge insight to a character. It's yeah. very cool. It's very cool. So here's a little setup of it, just so you know what I'm reading. Okay. So on August 1st, 1933, two young women, Grace and Willa, take off in a tiny moth biplane to break the world flight endurance record by circling Toronto for 25 days. So that is like straight up in the air, just going around and around in a circle. Grace is a famous aviatrix known as Air Ace Grace. She is determined and ambitious and wants to hold all the aviation records. Slight spoiler, so the record she's going for now, the endurance record, 
is um, the only one she doesn't hold. She races against men. The record is currently held by a man who happens to be her husband. So mm. she is breaking <laughs> his record. You're going to see how that goes. It's I've, yeah. I'll, I'm only like maybe a third of the way through the book. But I thought when I when she just like slipped that in, I was like, oh, oh, that's interesting. Anyway, so she's doing that and she has invited Willa to be her her partner. So Willa is far less experienced and suddenly finds herself, if not in the spotlight, because Grace is in the spotlight. She's on the cover of adventure magazines and flight magazines. So Willa finds herself just standing outside Grace's spotlight, which is not something that Grace is or Willa is normally used to. It's so good. And I, I love these stories. I love, I'm not originally from Toronto, however, I, or Ontario, but I love this province and I love reading books that are set in the past and getting a picture of this area as it was like 60, 70 years ago. So I love that part of it. Oh, I just had something else in my, oh yes. And when I ever, I think of something like this, I think of the logistics. Like I love the story behind it as well, but I'm like, 25 years or days I'm like how are they doing this but she gives she gives you those little like little boop this is how they're getting fuel and this is how they're getting food and this is how they're going to use the bathroom and I'm like I know that's I love that (laughs) yes so it's uh so far like full-on loving this book is that her first book that she wrote? Because I, you said at first you were I thinking think maybe so. you might do chronological. Yeah, I think it is. So I think she's written, had written poetry, had published some a few poetry books by this time. But I believe this is her first novel. Okay. Yeah. Do you know what year it was published? I'm just curious. Uh, do you have I any think, idea? I think I have it written down here. Uh, 1997. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh. So she's been publishing a long time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm just, what is it? 2024. And I'm reading the second book that she's written. Yeah. So what about you? What are you currently reading? Sounds really, that does sound really interesting. I think this is a Rebecca book. Yeah. Okay. I'm reading Bad Cree. Mm, So it's the last book I have to read for Canada Reads. And I'm about, yeah, I'm about halfway through. I'm really enjoying it. It is for those who aren't aware anyway the sherry lapina effect that's what i call it (laughs) sherry lapina the author says that people need to write a story that is really grabs you and is really interesting and not just you know highfalutin sort of can lit kind of stuff right and yeah yeah, very literary yes so i'm enjoying it i'm enjoying it from like page one and i do agree with everybody that said it may have some horror elements in it but it's not a horror story so that's kind of good as well and i'm yeah, well, I have a lot more to say about it, but yes, I'm halfway through and I'm enjoy- really enjoying it. So that's Excellent. it. Yeah. I love, I love that we're both currently like are enjoying our current reads. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yes. yeah. Yeah. Especially too, because I think this is only my third book this year so far that I've been reading because again, the puppy demands a lot of attention. So, but again, I'm being really calm about that. I yep. really, I'm just like, I will read when I can read. And however many books I read this year, it is what it is. And I, but I am going to go for those really like sometimes, you know, I might read something that I think, oh, I'm just going to throw this one in because I'm a mood reader. I think I'm going to be a lot more intentional because obviously I have my TBR that I need to get through this year and my goal stuff that I want to do. But I think I probably won't be grabbing at books as much just from a mood standpoint. Yeah. So I'm going to try and not buy any extra books <laughs> or yep. read a lot or listen to a lot of podcasts that give me a lot of great titles to yeah I've got to be a little more intentional this year I think see I find I'm not a mood reader but every now and then I can be because of the library so like the library allows me to be a mood reader because I can just go boop boop and put a hold on and then yeah. I get like a little dopamine hit from just doing that so yeah I like that okay yeah. so What do you want to talk about today with uh, our book chat? What books have you read or what have you read that you really want to talk about or you really enjoyed? Yeah, let's do that. Let's talk about a few books that we've uh, read since our last book chat, which was beginning of December. I think so. Yeah. It was a while ago. Yeah. Okay. Why don't you go first? Because I think you brought some more books. 
Yeah, I brought more books. Okay. Yeah. So I just want to mention, I talked about it in December, I think, just saying uh, that I was reading it, but In Search of April Raintree, which is a book that I received from the publisher and last year in 23, it was the 50th, or I'm sorry, 40th anniversary of the publication of the book. And I just want to mention for people who might not be aware, this is the adult version that she wrote, which is a fictionalized memoir. And in it, there are, I don't, you know, now it's so funny. I'm not even sure if there were trigger warnings in it. There probably were. But it is about sexual violence. Uh, suicide is also included. And this is, and I actually looked up the author, Beatrice Mos. I'm still so apologize. I can't pronounce it. Mosinier, Mosinier or something like that. Anyway, she, like what happens in the book is what happened to her in real life. So th there was a um, sexual violence scene in there that was so it was so shocking to me. I don't think I've ever read anything that's so graphic and description like that, that I, like I said, trigger warnings, I've never really personally needed, needed them because I can read something and it is just what it is. But mm -hmm. this actually really, I felt it when she was describing it. It was yeah. really horrific. But anyway, 1984, however, so this book came out in 83. In 84, they published a book called April Rain Tree, which was for young readers. So I'm bringing this up just in case somebody might be like, oh, I read that and it was whatever. It may be that you had the children's version or the young person's version versus the adult version. I would highly recommend it, even though it's 40 years old. It's a story about two sisters who really struggle due to their alcoholic parents and going into the foster care system and coming out and and the one thing that really struck me is that the main character uh April really despises the in, her indigenous background it's just really and and I think that was the first time I've read a book where it was palatable in terms of how much she didn't really like herself or other indigenous people. She really sort of blamed them for their circumstances. And even she herself had pretty bad circumstances. And she, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm trying yeah. to say? It was just yeah. really that that internalized racism or hatred for yourself. I, I just felt that more than anything. And that's something I hadn't read in the same way in a book. Yeah, a memoir, fiction or fictional or not, I just had never really read a character who. Well, I don't want to give anything away, but anyway, I just I'll just say that. Yeah. So anyway, I just wanted to make sure people understood that this wasn't the children's version; this was the adult version. It's really worth reading. It's worth looking at after forty years. Has that author written any other books? She has actually. She's published a few uh, books. I'm not. I can't remember how many. But she did write a memoir in 2009. Okay. And I kind of thought I might like to read that to see what sort of like what her view of her life has was. You know, that many many years later. Yeah. Uh, but the I don't think it got great reviews, so I don't know that I would go back and do that. But anyway, so yeah, she yeah. has written a number of things, but her memoir came out in 2009. Okay, the first book I'm going to bring is a collection of essays. So it's Imagining, Imagining, Essays on Language, Identity, and Infinity by Gary Barwin. Uh, Gary Barwin is a local author. He's in Hamilton, from Hamilton. Well, he lives in Hamilton at the moment. I think originally he is from uh, Dublin. I believe he was born in Dublin. And I can't remember. Dublin, Ireland? Ireland? Yes. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. He had a book on the Giller that was uh, nominated for the Giller several years ago, too. Oh. oh, Yiddish, how to speak Yiddish to pirates, oh. I believe. Yeah. Yes, I remember yeah. that. Yeah, oh. so I remember reading that. That's the only other book of his that I'd read, but this is a new one that came out recently. Um, I don't read collection of essay collections often. I don't know why. No reason. I just, I don't find, I just, I just don't. I do mm -hmm. enjoy them, but I just don't grab them, right? Yeah. Anyways, this one came, fell into my hands quickly in this collection. Barwin thinks about story and identity, art and death, how we communicate and why we dream, which seems like a, a lot. 
it's a difficult book to explain because there he covers so much in his essays. He is insightful, witty, and so funny, like weirdly funny that you want to chuckle. And it's not often you chuckle when you're reading books, but like I caught myself like a couple times snorting and chuckling. Like he's <laughs> super funny, but he's just, I highlighted so many lines in this book and there's a, uh, let me see if I can go through. There's a book about or an essay about his personal library collection and how he his thoughts on it and how he describes it. I love this. I'm just going to read this. Uh, my personal library isn't in one place. It's pervasive. It's scattered. It oozes. It's environmental. It's in most rooms in the house, on shelves, in stacks, beside the bed, in the bathroom, and books borrowed or once that have wandered off to friends and family. I think of it as rhizomatic, connected in invisible yet nourishing ways. Like it's just, he's wow. so, yeah. Again, the personal library, a personal library is a kind of palace too, though not only of memory, but also a topography of mind or potential. More than a palace, it's a garden shed. My library is a record of my reading or my thinking about reading. So it's, it's just, he's it's very cool little things that he's just, there's an essay on humor and why humor is important and how it transcends everything and allows us to communicate. He talks about his family a lot, his children. There's a beautiful essay that really focuses on his pet dog. He talks Aww. about, I know, it's very sweet. <laughs> he talks about the walks that he takes, especially at midnight. He goes for walks at night with his dog, either in his neighborhood or a conservation area. And Gary if you're listening, I know where, because I'm like, through the descriptions, I'm like, I know where he walks at midnight. I'm not going there, but I'm like, I know where. It's just, yeah. I really enjoyed it. So, and it's a beautiful covering. So I'm going to show it to Rebecca with all the constellations. It's really. I have a copy of that because I got that through the, you know, Holly yeah, Godry's yeah. program. Yeah. River yeah. Street Rights. Yeah. I got, a, I have a copy and I'm really looking forward to reading it yeah. because I have read a few essay collections here and there, but I'm like you, they don't really necessarily stand out or I don't yeah. gravitate toward them in a big way, but I really do love essay collections because it's, it's kind of like that short story thing, right? Where you just get a mm -hmm. little hint of something, although it's nonfiction. So yeah. yeah. I like that. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Well, I'm excited for you to read it because I really enjoyed it. I was, it was, I think it was the last book of 2023 for me. So it was like a really nice way to end mm -hmm. the year. Yeah. That's a good one. So, yeah. okay. So the next book I want to mention is a Canada Reads contender. It is The Future. And this is the one that is the French did not surrender the city of Detroit. And it's a fictional, well, obviously it's fictional, duh. Anyway, it's a fictional <laughs> story. So I just want to mention a couple things about it because we're all going to be getting sick of Canada Reads if we keep going, or I should say, I'm going to keep, get more and more sick of it because it's like, it's just everything involved uh, in my life right now. And I keep talking about it and I just feel like, ugh, let's just wait till the competition. Let somebody say something better than I'm going to say right now. But anyway, okay. So I just want to mention, I really don't care what anybody says. I think it's marketed wrong. I don't think it has this huge French influence. And, and our good friend, Justine, gave a really good case about the translation maybe not really grabbing the essence of the Frenchness of the story. That may very well be true. I have no idea. But for me, I didn't feel that French influence so much. And so I just feel like going into it, I, I was expecting kind of something and I didn't get that still love the story, but I just didn't get it. I thought she did a brilliant job. The description of current Detroit, because she has visited Detroit. She spent time in Detroit. She really gets it. And I think she portrays it really, really well. I did. It is a dark story. There are some elements to it that are very dark, but what I did love and I think you actually said it first, Tara, and I I think you helped me look at it and go, oh, yeah, that's right. Duh, that's the part I liked as well, which is how much the people were a community, whether it was the children mm -hmm. or the people who developed 
relationships through gardening, urban gardening, and sort of security or safety, that just that community. And I know that is part of Detroit because the people who either were, quote, stuck there or who made a choice to move into those areas that were being rehabbed and everything, that's what I've heard others say. So I do think she really nailed the essence of Detroit. But what I kind of wanted out of the story was, really, would it have been different if the French had maintained it? And in this case, no, basically, it really, it's still a car, you know, car place. I mean, car companies and blah, blah, blah. And so I didn't feel like there was anything there that was really unique. The story is wonderful, Mm -hmm. but I do think the marketing was a little bit off for me. Yeah, I agree. Well, I'm bringing another Canada Reads book to follow up yours, but mine's from the long list. So it did not make the short list, but I had read it before the short list was announced. And that is The Winter Night by Jess Battis, queer urban retelling of the King Arthur myth happening in Vancouver. So here's my little setup. When one of the knights of the round table, a university professor, is killed at a party, Hildy, a val- Valkyrie, is assigned the case. The suspect list includes Wayne, an autistic college student, and the reincarnation of Sir Gawain, who finds himself drawn deeper into, the mis- into his medieval family's history and a relationship with Bert, the dean's charming assistant, who is also a suspect in the original killing. And have I mentioned the beast that stalks Wayne's dreams? If they want to stop the killings, Wayne and Hildy must work with fallen knights, runesmiths, and the quirky, weird sisters of Gastown to find the killer and stop the killing. Yeah. Anyways, it's a. Uh, I actually, I've basically my setup for you is all about the mystery, but to me, the mystery is secondary to the characters because I love the characters in this book. They are a diverse cast of characters in terms of being neurodivergent such as Wayne uh, sexuality gender the whole scope is in this book and it's in there in such a way as this is just what they are so not like nothing is explained like even there is a trans character and her story you get her story throughout but she's a character she's not a character because she's a trans character she just is trans and she's a character who plays a pivotal role in the book right and then towards the end of the story you actually get a little bit about her transition but it's coming out as to describe to help explain like something that's happening in the story so it's so go ahead no so uh, i'm sorry to interrupt uh, but it's in other words they're they're all interwoven. Nothing yes. stands out in a way that makes you feel like it's planted there for effect. Yes, exactly. That that's, no, that's a beautiful way of saying it. That's exactly how it is. And it's a really large cast of characters. So I haven't mm-hmm. thrown them all in here. But yes, exactly that. Even the author's use of pronouns is just for certain characters. It just flows. Like oh, nothing's nice. explained. It's just like, this character is they. It just kind of flows. Like Hildy herself is having uh, struggles with her sexuality and who she loves. And, you know, like it's just all part of the story and part of the characters. Yeah. Yeah. I like it's that. Beautiful. You know, it's kind of like in Bad Cree because the character Jolie, who you meet really early on, she's a co worker and friend yeah. of uh, the main character. And I, it's the same thing. The pronouns were there, they, yep. them, and the whole thing. And, and it just, there was no explanation there. It just, it was just a natural part of the story. Yep. And I like that because sometimes, and I get in the beginning, sometimes they have to, you know, do more explanation for people like in the beginning of, um, I'll say a movement. That's not yeah. the right word, but do you yeah. know what I'm saying? I know what you mean. Yeah. So in this case, it's now just becoming more, it's just natural. This is what it is. There's just storytelling, right? Yeah. Okay. I like that. Yeah. I really, so it's a slow burn of a book that's more about character driven than is plot driven. Okay. Although the plot is fun too. And did you, oh, I know what I was going to ask. Do you know if the author has written other 
books or is this a first novel or do you know? I, no, they've written quite a few books, I think, in the okay. fantasy. Uh, Jess Battis is also a university professor, teaches medieval oh. studies, I think, and writing and English and has yeah. written several I, fantasy books. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So not, not their first. Okay. I would read more of their books, actually. Yeah. I enjoyed okay. it. Yeah. Excellent. Okay, my next book again is a uh, Canada Reads book, Denison Avenue. I've already probably said so much about this book, so I won't go into great detail other than it's a beautiful melding of a story and the graphical images that are, I, I read it as an ebook, but they were in the back of the book. So I'm assuming that's how it is in the physical book, but I don't know that for sure. Uh, I do want to eventually buy a copy. And it's just, it's just a really beautiful story. Anyway, it's about gentrification. I don't want to say too much. Somebody asked me, it was so funny. They asked me about one part that I left out that was a critical piece, but it happens in the beginning of the book. And I don't want to give anything away mm. at all because for me, I didn't know. I, I, again, I don't really read the covers that much. I didn't really know. And it hit me. It was like a gut punch. So I don't want to say anything more than the main character she is the epitome of resilience, which is why this is a book I said I, I think or I want to have when Canada reads. And I just picture this really older woman whose life gets turned upside down and her her community is getting really turned around with gentrification. But she finds a way to take on a sort of a side job that isn't easy, but she does it and she thrives. And I just, I love this book. I just love this book so much. So anyway, Denison Avenue. I wanted to read anyways, but you're a little, especially what you said there towards the end, I'm even more intrigued by it now. So I want to know what, don't tell me though, what her like side hustle is. I, won't. I want the gut punch. I love a gut punch mm -hmm, in a book. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, I want that. Yeah. And it, it starts out, I mean, it happens like right at the beginning. So that's what I wasn't expecting it. And I, I mean, I'm just saying I wasn't expecting it. So I was like, mm -hmm. whoa. And then it just pushes you into the story. I mean, it just yeah. like, that's, it just, yeah, pushes you right into the story. And I just thought it was beautiful. And I cannot wait for the former mayor of Calgary. I don't know his name. Yeah. I can't remember to defend it. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to it. I know it's not our Canada Reads episode, but yeah. if you had to choose between the two to win Canada Reads, which would you choose? You mean between the future and... Yeah. And Denison Avenue. No, Denison Avenue, hands down. I okay. Like I said, for me, the future, that, that was just that big bump for me that I was expecting something a little bit different. I still like, love the story, but for me, I Denison Avenue just... And I think, again, part of it was that in the images in the back of the book, I recognize, I mean, he lit literally, Dan Daniel Innes literally is sketching or sketched those places in Kensington Market in Chinatown. And it, even there's a an Instagram account where he shows like a photograph mm -hmm. of the place and then his image in the same cool. screen, same shot. And... I recognize some of it because I've been there a few times. And so that just made it feel like, oh, I know this area a little bit, a little mm -hmm. bit, not much, but a little bit. So anyway, uh, so d hands down, 100% Denison Avenue for me. Nice. Okay. My third book is one I just finished and it is called Starling House by Alex E. Harrow. Have you heard of this one, Rebecca? No. Mm -mm. It's fairly new. Uh, when was it published? I'm going to say... Grab my book beside me. Yeah, show me the cover um, too, because I don't think I know this. Uh, October 2023. Sorry, my it's my oh, okay. journal. I don't actually have the book. It was a library book, but uh, October 2023. So not that long. I waited a long time for it to come in from the library. Okay, my setup. Eden, Kentucky is a dying bad luck town. Oops, sorry about that. My book fell. That's what I'm apologizing okay. for. <laughs> uh, known for its coal mining history and the legend of E. Starling, the reclusive 19th century author and illustrator who wrote one children's book, The Underland, and then disappeared. 
just before she disappeared, Starling House appeared. And every few years, a member of the Starling family appears in town to become the new caretaker. No one visits, no one leaves, groceries are left outside the gate, and the town do their best to ignore the strange happenings at the, at the house. When Opal, a young woman, is offered a job as a housekeeper of Starling House by the current caretaker, she can't say no. She lives in a motel room with her younger brother Jasper and works as a cashier. Their mother died in a car crash several years earlier, and all she wants is something better for Jasper. She wants him to get out of Eden, and the only way he can do that is with money. But has Opal found a home with Arthur, that's the new caretaker, in Starling House, and is she willing to fight sinister forces to save it? I'm looking that up right now because it's, I do not. That sounds fabulous. It is so much fun because yeah. it's a sinister house. The house is a character. Mm. Not going to spoil anything. The house is a character, but not in a bad way. It is a little creepy yeah. at times, but just go with the creepiness. It's not too bad. It's kind of more like what's out of the corner of her eye kind of thing when she's cleaning the house. But you get the history of this town which is, and it's told several times throughout the book, you get alternate tellings of different tellings. So it's a whole, you know, thing about storytelling and whose story is it and who gets to tell the story. So that is so, it's fascinating. There is a fictional biography at the end of it like at the you finish the book because you got the narrator oh there's footnotes I love this there's it's a fi book of fiction obviously with yeah. footnotes uh, and the narrator is speaking to you through the footnotes it will be like well I found this on this page or something oh, like this you know I, I, love, which, that. I love that I, it was so cool and you finish the book the last page and facing you is a biography so I'm like biography I'm like sign me up. I'm going to read. So I actually fell for this. I like when I start, I'm like, start <laughs> Googling this book. And I'm like, wait, wait, Tara. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's a book of fiction. This is a fictional biography. And she just got me anyway. Yeah. So it, but it's so much fun. Great characters, not totally likable, but likable at the same time. If you know, I like you just, you can't help but love Opal. She's oh, yeah. so nasty, but she has <laughs> reasons to be nasty. Same with uh, Arthur. And then there's like the side characters are fantastic. It's just a really fun book. And this is not her first book, the first book of hers that I've read, but I'm going to go back and uh, read more because I think she's won a Hugo for one of her books. Oh, yeah. Wow. So I have one more book I'd like to talk about, which is Dearborn. And this is a linked stories, short stories collection. And it is set in Dearborn, Michigan, which is home to the largest Muslim population in the United States per capita. Wow. And Omar al he mentioned it. And then I thought, oh, I'll have to check this out, especially because it's Dearborn, Michigan, which is like an hour away from me. And I loved this book so much. First of all, I loved linked stories so much. And I just want to mention a couple of the themes that really came through uh, so beautifully. And one of them is people becoming refugees and then spending maybe the rest of their lives wanting to return home, but they can't because the situation from in their homeland is just untenable. So they can't return. So there's that longing to go back. And, you know, when you look at the whole world situation with the refugees all around the world, I think that's something that I don't know. I haven't experienced, obviously. I was born and raised here in the U.S., but I think about other people and what they have to give up and then that longing to return. So that's one of the themes. There's also the Islamophobia after 9-11, how much the, gover the U.S. government was sort of <laughs> knocking on people's doors questioning them, just that overall horrible time for people who were, that that was their faith and that they, mm -hmm. even, you know, if they were in a mosque and they had people coming in and questioning them and everything. So there, there's that theme as well. 
There's intimate partner violence, which was kind of interesting because it was done in a, I want to say it was kind of done in a, I want to say a subtle way. And I say subtle only because you often don't realize what's going on until finally it's sort of just mentioned and you realize it's what women have lived with in their lives in these particular characters and that it it's just part of who, you know it's part of their lives which is really sad that part was really sad but oh and then the other one was um that the children that are coming out of these people's lives who you know had to were refugees and came to the US how much their children have little to no connection to the homeland so the parents have this longing to return and the younger people just have no connection. They don't feel what their parents feel. And so that is kind of another interesting dynamic to it. But there were two things that were really uh, funny or that I learned. One is apparently, according to the short stories, which I believe because the guy who wrote it grew up in Dearborn, but he, everybody, the goal is to get a billboard. <laughs> to have some kind of a job, a business where your face is going to be up on a billboard. I think in almost each of the 10 short stories, there was some some comment made about a, bu- a billboard, getting somebody's face on a billboard, which I thought was really funny. And I thought if I go to Dearborn, which I think I would love to go yeah. for the food, uh, I thought I'm totally going to look for these billboards and see if that's still if that's still the case, that people are putting their faces on billboards, which I thought was hilarious. <laughs> The other thing I just want to mention, my favorite short story, just because it's the one I'll always remember, which was very funny, is the one called Speedo Man. So there's a man who comes into this like public pool and he's wearing a Speedo and he's like an older man. I think he's like supposed to be in his 70s or something. He's wearing a Speedo. And I'm not going to give it away because I think the story is so funny and so wonderful. But the the male reaction to the man in the Speedo is very different than the female reaction to the man in the Speedo. And I was telling Tara earlier uh, after I had read it that I feel like it was kind of a, a metaphor in a way for showing that the men maybe missed their homeland a little bit more than the women who were willing to step into this new life and I kind of felt like that's who Speedo Man represented, like change and who was more or less willing to accept that change. So anyway, I loved Speedo Man. I thought it was hilarious. <laughs> I thought it was beautiful and, and poignant, but it was actually really, really funny. So I just had to throw that one in there. <laughs> yep. So read it. If, if nothing else, just read it for Speedo Man. It was <laughs> wonderful. Who doesn't love a Speedo? Yeah. So those are my, I read quite a bit. Now, next month... <laughs> <laughs> I have like one book to talk about, but uh, this past month was good. Yeah, you have puppy classes coming up. That's gonna a puppy class coming mm-hmm. up, and this will introduce little Aurora to new a lot of dogs and people. And I kind of told Tara earlier this could just be a shit show. Who knows how it's going to go? <laughs> because she has only seen me really, and uh she's going to just be so happy to get mm-hmm. out and about i think and that'll be yep. a good thing and then in a month she'll be able to start going out in public with me which is awesome. what we'll be doing like every day we'll go somewhere it'll be nice cuz it'll force me to get yeah. out of the house too yeah. so she's uh training me and i'm training her awesome so. i wish yeah. i know it's not possible cuz you're going to have your hands full at the puppy class but it would be awesome if you like could take a video i'm i know you can't i'm not saying this to tell you to but I would love to see the chaos that is all these puppies <laughs> in this class. <laughs> I know because you can't. The one, it's going to be too much. It, but, I know it's totally going to be too much, but yeah. I have to laugh too because the one that is just really stuck in my head, there are going to be, I think there are nine people and nine dogs in the class, <laughs> but I think uh, a couple of them, I, there might be like three or four labs because okay. Aurora is a lab looking she's a golden retriever lab mix but she looks like a black lab but it's so funny because the woman sitting next to me said she has a i thought she said 10 weeks a 10 week old great dane oh and she said already he can put his head on the table like his head reaches the table and i thought oh and she said and it was so cute cuz she said i don't know what i was thinking but i i was thinking of like Oh, when they're adults, they're big. I didn't stop to think about how big they are as puppies. 
<laughs> and I thought, yeah, probably I would have done the same thing. Oh, yeah. they're so big, but thinking as puppies, they're small, but they're not. So anyway, yep. yes, uh, I will tell you, Tara, for sure yep. how it goes. But um, anyway, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, yep. we just Puppy need to get chaos. out. And, yep, puppy chaos. We just need yep. to get out and see a little bit of the world. So You do. You do. Okay, well, good luck with the puppy classes and happy reading to all of us. Thank you for joining us on our bookish journey. If you enjoyed this episode, please consider subscribing, rating, and reviewing Canada Reads American Style wherever you listen. You can connect with the podcast and Rebecca on Instagram at Canada Reads American Style and with Tara at On a Branch Reads. Until next time, keep reading. Thank you.